kingdom mindset means that we love even those people that are unlovable. I want to be hungry. God, I want to be thirsty for your word. I want to learn how to pray. I want to learn how to do good. I want to learn how to love people, even those people. I want to learn how to bless them. Jesus was betrayed by Judas. He was deserted by his disciples. He was beaten by the very people that he served. He was mocked. He was stripped naked. He was crowned with thorns. And ultimately, he was rejected by the very people he came to save. I would never do that to you, Lord. If you have unforgiveness, if you have anger, if you don't do, if you don't treat, if you don't walk the way that Jesus told us to, then you're doing the same thing. So I get the privilege of bringing the word this morning, and I'm excited about what God's going to speak to our house. I tried last Sunday, but uh, the Holy Spirit hijacked it, and I'm very, very grateful. So if you're taking notes this morning, come on, open your Bible. Go to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5. We've been in a series called Triggers, and today we wrap it up. And uh, over the last several weeks, we've been able to really, I believe, touch and bring truth and revelation and highlight um, things that trigger people, that trigger situations, that trigger trauma, that triggers. So today I want to talk about those people. Can you shout those people? So who the heck are those people? Well, you may be sitting, no, 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 you're not sitting next to one. But you may know somebody, right, that is what you and I would describe as those people, right? Those people that are um, critical, those people that are uh, oftentimes angry, those people that no matter what you ask them, the glass is always half empty. You know those kind of people, don't you? Those people that are controlling, those people that are uh, manipulative, that are mean, they know it all. Um, Angie and I have something funny that we call them toppers. Like when you're telling a story about something they got to somehow insert themselves into the story, and then whatever you said, they got to top whatever you just said. Do you know any of those folks? Come on, are you sitting? No, no, don't raise your hand. Come on, these kinds of those people, they're all around us. There may even be some of those people in the sound of my voice this morning, or there may be some of those people at your workplace. There may even be some of those people in your neighborhood that no matter what you do, no matter how you try to serve that neighbor, that those people, they're just mean. Have you ever met anybody like that? No matter what you do, it's never enough. Well, I got good news for you uh, this morning. Jesus knew ahead of time, 2,000 plus years ago, that you and I will need some, we'll need some guidance. We'll need some coaching. We'll need, we'll need a, little bit of, a little bit of help from the back end in order to, how do we work? How do we live? How do we love those people? Shout those people. Come on, if you're in the gospel of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, in other words, he's talking to me, he's talking to you. He says, love your enemies, somebody shout love. It says, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, shout the word bless. It says, do good to those who hate you, shout the word do good. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, shall pray for. So that is your playbook right there, according to Jesus. And I hope I'm in a room full of people that want to do it Jesus' way. Can I have an amen? I don't want to do it Tim's way because I've tried it and it doesn't work out so well. I want to do it his way. But you see, I want to break this verse down and give you a little, bit of, um, a little bit of revelation in terms of what Jesus is doing and how to, make this, um, how to make this message practical apply to you. Because the reality is, as I said at the very beginning, it's not a matter of, of, of if you will find those people. It's just a matter of when. There's difficult people all around us. You don't have to go very far. In fact, in the comfort of your own phone, you can find difficult people. They text you. 
you're on group text messages, you're on social media, you're on YouTube. Heck, just turn on your uh, TV. I cannot, it's one of my pet peeves, although I love sports, I love, I, I do enjoy listening to the news, but I can't stand when they sit there and argue and talking over one another. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, amen, all right. It's just a pet peeve of mine. So the good news is with the power of TV, I have the power to do what? Turn it off. And so that's what I do. But Jesus knows that for people that are in our lives, our spouses, our kids, our grandkids, heck, our coworkers, uh, once again, people that live next to us, just strangers in the store, we can't always turn those people off. And so love is the first thing he said in this scripture. He says, love your enemies. So the question is, is who are your enemies? Who are your enemies? Well, it's anyone that chooses, that's the key word, anyone that chooses to resist God. For you see, Jesus said the two greatest commandments are to love God and what? Love each other. So if, if an enemy refuses to love God or someone that refuses to love God and love each other, that is an enemy according to scripture that somehow, some way they have chosen to rebel, to, to push back, to somehow not do it God's way. If we see it's also the, the definition of enemy is someone quite frankly that hates you. Have you ever met someone that hates you? <laughs> I got one amen. Come on, seriously. Can you think of somebody today that just has it out for you? Not too long ago, um, when Angie and I were stepping into this role, and um, we had a, a, a handful of folks that just, they just, <laughs> they just couldn't understand why or if God would somehow use my wife and I to, to step into to lead this church, and I'll never forget it, and I, I've used it in many conversations just because it just gives a little, it gives a little fuel under me. And, and, and on social media, they're just talking about our house, and then they called me Satan. I took great pride in that because that just means I irritated them for the Lord. Amen? Can I have an amen? By the way, I'm not Satan, y'all. Amen? I will, I will say that sometimes I can't get in my flesh, but God's working on me. Hallelujah. Amen? I know all y'all are perfect saints and nobody in the sound of my voice ever gets in your flesh, but I'm telling you, for me, I'm still a work in progress. Amen? So I just know that I know that I know that there will be people that irritate you, that, that heck even hate you. And those are the enemies, people that want to treat you opposite from how you want to be treated. People that are just nasty. So what did God say? What did Jesus himself, he said? He said, love them. Woo! Man, you want to talk about trigger? You get around somebody that's nasty. You get around somebody that, that wants to somehow see you, uh, see you fall. They want to somehow talk about you or your family or your dogs or whatever it may be. And, and you're like, no, 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 no. And you, what do you want to do? You want to you wanna somehow, you want to go against them. You want to attack them. Jesus said, don't do that. And said, do what, you guys? Love them. Love them. And not just any kind of love in this, in this passage. He's talking about agape love. See, that's a different kind of love. Agape love is a sacrificial love. It's, a, uh, it's, a, it's not a love that's self-serving. It's a love that chooses to put somebody else ahead of you. Are you saying, Pastor, that I need to, I need to allow somebody to be ahead of me even though they are nasty to me? I'm not saying it. Jesus is saying it. Love your enemies. Choose others. Cheer them on. That's how you know the Bible is real. It's when you bump in against people that are somehow, some way saying, I hate you. And rather than doing what the world says, which is to retaliate. For you see, we don't fight we don't fight a physical battle. It's a spirit, y'all. It's pervasive in our, in our culture today. Have you noticed that? 
It doesn't take long to step into a conversation, to step into a social thread, to step into uh, uh, wherever it may be, wherever you do life at. Heck, even in the church, it happens. Will you believe that today sitting amongst you are people that can irritate you? They, they can irritate you, even though that you are a born-again, chandelier-swinging, devil-stomping, pew-jumping. Uh, pew you, are, you, are, you can worship, you can dance, you can do whatever you but yet there's still something in you that doesn't want to love that person, those people. Amen? Hello? Are you guys okay? I'm going to step on your toes, so just, just strap in. Amen? Because Jesus said in the red letters, love your enemies. For you see, how we treat other people demonstrates to the world that we are followers of Christ. John, in the Gospel of John says his best, it says, by this, those people uh, will know that you are my disciples. What was the this that Jesus was talking about? Love. Somebody shout love. We, they will know that you are God's, that Jesus' disciples by the love that you have for one another. Hey, if we can't get it right inside of these four walls, then we'll never get it, we'll never grab a hold of it outside of these doors, amen? That's why Jesus is saying, hey, they must know you by the, the character. They, makes, they must know you by the content. They must know you by the words, by, heck, even by the nonverbal. Do you know that somehow, some way, you can throw shade at somebody without even talking? My wife, who is not here, she's at a gymnastics competition in South Florida. My daughter's killing it, by the way, this morning. Uh, they started at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And so I've been getting updates. But my wife is amazing at this in the context of when she and I are in a, um, what's the word, in a uh, intense fellowship. Come on, couples, have you ever had any intense fellowship? She can say a lot by her eyes. She can say a lot by her nonverbal without even, without even saying anything. My mom is also notorious at that, and I'm at the, the tender age of 54, soon to be 55 here in, in next week, next Saturday, and uh, I used to think that was really old. I feel old sometimes, but I'm doing pretty good, y'all. But how I many you know moms just have a way, man, they can cut you the look. They can cut you the look. And you're like, yes, ma'am, right? They don't even have to say anything. Come on, moms. They can cut it. They can cut the look. But Jesus knows that no matter whether it's verbal or nonverbal, that you must love your enemies. Jesus, in fact, said, what do your enemies look like? And, and in his case, these were people that cursed him. These are people that hated him. These are people that, that uh, spitefully uh, persecuted him. For you see, Jesus knew coming into the mission that he was on that people were going to hate him. And it's those same people, huh? it's those same people that hated Jesus in the spirit of how they hate him are the same people that are in operation today, amen? It's that same spirit. But I'm thankful that Jesus didn't retaliate. Instead, he hung on a cross. He loved people, even those people. He died for even those people, the people that hated and, and, and persecuted him and, and ultimately hung him on a cross. But he knew he was on mission, amen? And so that agape love, that, that agape love, it is the very thing that has to get on the inside of you and I as believers, no matter how we're triggered by people. No matter how we're triggered by their nastiness, you and I must walk in agape love, choosing others. It's quiet in here this morning because I believe this is an area where the church, Big C Church, we have not gotten this right in 2024. Where we are, we look like oftentimes the world in terms of how we respond. We can come in here on a Sunday morning, we can have amazing worship moments, but by the time you reach that car, somehow, some way, you get in a fight with your spouse, with your kids, with your grand, I don't know, you read a poet, whatever it may be, and somehow you are triggered into this, this thinking that somehow, some way, he or she is my enemy. It, 
I'm trying. I'm stepping on everyone's toes this morning. Why? Because Jesus wants you to love your enemies. Those people, shout those people. We've got to have a kingdom mindset, y'all. Kingdom mindset means that we love even those people that are unlovable. Have you ever met somebody? I do, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll protect the guilty. They are just, honestly, they are just unlovable. And I knew that, that somehow they would end up in this message, but I won't say, I won't say it's somebody in the past. Like I, like, I just had a really difficult time loving them. Why? Because they were just nasty. I know you all are way more spiritual. I'm just, I've had, a, I've had to check my heart even this morning walking into this message. Lord, am I doing what you said to do is to love them. Because the second thing that Jesus said, he says you must bless, in that same verse, he says you must bless those who curse you. Whew. Yeah, this is where it's going to get real. Are you telling me that, Pastor, that I have to bless somebody who overtly curses me? I'm not telling you. Jesus is telling you. And he said, if you want to be a follower, let the love of God flow out of you. Let the love for others flow out of you. Let the fruit on your life be demonstrable. Are you with me? I don't have time this morning to talk about the fruit of the Spirit, but let's just say that if, you are, if you're a born-again believer, you've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, your, abil your supernatural ability to flow in the fruit of the Spirit demonstrates that you've got the love of God flowing through you. Agape love, amen? Love that gives away. Are you with me, church? Love that gives and chooses others. For you say, Jesus said, bless those who curse you. In other words, find something good to say about him, about her. Not the trap of, and I've heard this saying before, well, if you don't have anything good to say, then don't say anything at all. Have you ever heard that before? Maybe some of y'all even uh, ab uh, abide by that. I'm telling you, Jesus is saying, bless those who curse you. Find something good in difficult people. Pray for your enemies or love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Jesus said, bless them. Regardless of what they say, regardless of how they try to fight you. Now, I'm not saying be a doormat. <laughs> Amen. You have the power, we talked about this a few weeks ago, you have the power to walk away. You have the power to turn that person off, amen? Hello? You have the, per, you have the power to say, I'm not gonna receive what you're dishing out, amen? But that you're not allowed not to bless them. Jesus said, you must bless them. So find something in them, have and see through the eyes of Christ, them. Not easy, but not difficult, amen, if you're in Christ. Build one another's up, Ephesians 4 says. In other words, with difficult people around you, oftentimes people that are, that are difficult in your lives, people that you run into that are nasty, it's because there's something on the inside of them that needs to be healed. If you really just wanna rip open their soul, I guarantee you, you will find some kind of lie on the inside of them. It's the, it's the syndrome of somebody when I was a little guy playing on the playground. We never, um, uh, my wife has talked about this and I've talked about it like, like we, you know, we just play on the playground and, and, and I never wanted to pick the, the small, if I was a captain, I never wanted to pick the small scrawny dude, right? But sometimes the small scrawny dude actually has the most fight in them, Amen? Maybe some of y'all were that person. And you've, been, you've had that fighter mentality all your life. And in some cases, if it may serve you well. But in the case of where it pushes people away, it creates enemies in your life, that's a problem, y'all. That's not biblical. That's the person that Jesus is talking to this morning, that you must 
They must know you by the fruit of your life. Third thing, come on, if you're taking notes. So the first one is love your enemies. Second one is bless those that curse you. The third one was do good. Do good to those who hate you. Do good to those that hate you. Serve others. Serve them. Cook them a meal. Hold a door open for them. Leave a note on them. Jesus loves you. Do good. Had a um, situation a few years ago. I was traveling. <clears throat> and uh, I was, I, because I was traveling a lot at the time, I got upgraded to, to first class. And um, when you're a big dude, sitting in the airline seat really, um, it's not very comfortable. Uh, so anytime you get upgraded, it's, it's a blessing. And so anyhow, I was, um, I was up there, and uh, it was the middle of the day. And if you ask flight attendants, and I don't know if we have one in the building, but all, all the problems typically in a plane typically happen in the first class people because somehow they feel entitled. <laughs> Amen? Like somehow I, I, I'm here, so you're going to serve me. So anyhow, long story short, um, there was this guy. Uh, he was one seat in front of me, uh, and there was a flight attendant that was serving uh, the first class. I think there was maybe, I don't know, eight or ten seats. Um, and I was right behind this guy. And he proceeded literally, uh, it's, a, it's a short flight from Pensacola to, to Atlanta, uh, about 40 minutes. And literally before the plane even took off, he was already um, uh, harassing her and being nasty to her. And, and just, um, I, I can tell, being flirtatious with him. Well, she's got a job to do. She's not there to, to somehow appease your flirtations. Can I have an amen, ladies? Hello? And so she's there to do her job, to, to serve, you know, drinks. And anyhow, and this guy just kept, went on and went on. Um, and then finally, uh, she was walking, and I'll never forget it. Um, she was walking by, and, and he kind of sort of grabbed her rear end. So I want to let you know that I did good. Amen? So I got up out of my seat. I went over in front of the guy. Now, I don't know how big of a dude this is because I'm behind him. And he, but I'm a, pretty good, I'm a pretty good sized guy. And so I just want to let you know right in the middle of the flight, flight's a, about ready to land. It's just a, you know, just a short flight. I said, hey, bud, I want to let you know that what you've been doing to this young lady that's trying to serve you, it's uncalled for. It's unacceptable. And when we get off the plane, we're going to have a few words. Somebody shout, do good. I had no idea where this is going, amen. I was feeling it, y'all. Come on, y'all. Man, I drank my protein shake that morning. I was fired up. Thank God that dude wasn't like 6'6", 250. Whew. He was just a little short, scrawny guy. Yes. No, no offense against short, scrawny guys in this church, Amen. Anyhow, so I whipped around there. I said, hey, dude, we're going to have words when we get off this plane. And he said, oh, I look forward to that. I'm like, I bet you do. And uh, he said, I'll talk to you off. The, I, I'll, I'll meet you after the plane. Like, Let's go. Let's go. So um, me being the wise one I was, I also notified the flight attendant, hey, I want to let you know that this guy, what he's been doing has been unacceptable to you. And if you, if you could, if you could notify the authorities when we get off the plane. Hey, a dude with a gun and a badge is way better than a, a pastor, amen? But I, got, I do have Jesus on my side. I was just, my angels are working overtime that particular day. And so anyhow, we pop up, and this little short, scrawny guy, he can barely reach his luggage right above, right? And I, I pop my luggage, out, and I'm just, come here, Laz, you wanted to preach anyways this morning. Come on, get up here, hurry. Hurry, 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 hurry. Hurry, Laz. He's like, no, all right, I come to you then. So he's just a little short, scrawny guy about that high, amen? But Laz is powerful. And so we pop up, and, and he gets in my face. I get in his face. Right in the middle of the plane, y'all, this is good stuff. I'm, I'm thinking, I don't know how. And so they, uh, he starts talking trash to me, and so I bless him. I do good. Somebody shout, do good. Come on, he's one of those people. Shout those people. And so uh, the flight attendant uh, allows me and this dude to get off the plane first. That was pretty good. And right when she opened the door, guess who was on the other side of that door? Atlanta's finest. Two big old dudes with guns and badges, and they drug that dude off and handcuffed him. Man, I was thinking, glory to God. Somebody shout, do good. 
we got off the plane, and I, I never, I, I didn't catch the flight attendant's name. And uh, we bumped into, we, uh, I mean, it's just, it's supernatural how it happened, uh, that I bumped into her uh, two concourses over. If you've ever been to Atlanta Airport, it's just like thousands of people. I bumped into her too. Hey, I, I didn't need an attaboy. I didn't need an girl. I didn't need, I, I, like, I'm doing good, amen? I'm sticking up for, in this case, for a female. Hey, guys, will you do that as well, amen? Come on, will we treat and honor the women, uh, whether you know them or whether you don't know them? And so anyhow, two concourses over, I was heading to my gate, and there she was. And she remembered me. And she said, I just want to thank you for sticking up for me. And I, I don't know how to do it any other way, amen? Come on, do good, you guys. Do good. It doesn't mean that you have to be nasty and, and ugly, but it also means sometimes you gotta, you got to do good. you got to stick up for people, amen? Hey, people may hate on you based on the God that's on the inside of you, how God's blessed you. I have a saying I've been, I hope you guys write this down. I have a saying I've been using lately, uh, favor ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. Hey, I'm, I'm unapologetically, I am unapologetically um, uh, as your pastor, I'm unapologetically as this amazing church, I'm just declaring that favor ain't fair sometimes. Amen? That the blessings of heaven flow down because if we do it God's way, guess what? God says that he will command a blessing. If we tithe, if we give, if we serve, if we preach the gospel, if we walk in love and integrity, if we do all the things that the Bible says, God says that the favor of the Lord will find you. So I've just been saying, God, favor ain't fair. I've got joy. You've got peace. And you can hate on me because of that, but I'm just telling you that, that you didn't give it to me and you can't, you can't take it away. I'm going to do good, amen, even to those people. Shout those people. Come on, last one he said in that verse. So he said, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those that hate you, and then the last one he says is pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. In other words, make a request on behalf of someone else other than you despite those people. <laughs> pray for them, intercede for them, have faith for them. I mean, some of you all in the sound of my voice this morning, you may have been one of those people, but because somebody had been praying for you, because somebody had been sowing seeds in you. Because someone never stopped believing that somehow, someway, if God can do it for that person, then God can do it for you. Amen? But somehow we can get righteous in our thinking that, that somehow, someway, that God can't do the impossible. I want to declare out of this microphone that God can do the impossible. I am living proof of it. You are living proof of it. That with God all things are they are possible. So pray for our enemies. Pray for the people that, that trigger you. Pray for them. Love these people. Bless them. Do good. Lift them up. Let them know that in on the inside of you, there is a full-grown Jesus that's praying for them. Even the difficult people. Loving on all of those people. Can I just put a demand on you. That's why the power of the Holy Spirit has to be in operation in our lives. Amen? That doing good to people, blessing them, loving them, praying for them. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, then you supernaturally will not be able to do what I'm describing here today. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important in the lives of believers that you and I can and you and I will walk this supernatural life. Why and how? I've got the Holy Spirit in me. So even though you are difficult, even though you are nasty, even though you hate me, I still love you. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trade Christmas gifts with you. Hello? Hello? It doesn't mean I'm going to allow you to come into my house and be toxic to my family. Hello? Come on, y'all. Y'all got to set some boundaries around nasty people. Some of y'all are, are more saintly than Mother Teresa. 
You allow anybody in your house. Yeah, no, sir. Thank you. But you will. You allow anybody in your house. And sometimes it's not just the physical people. Sometimes it's the online people. It's the YouTube people. It's, uh, it's the X people. It's, uh, it's the Instagram, whatever, whatever it may be. Whoever, somehow, someway you let in. Listen, you need a guard. You need to put boundaries around your life. Amen? Because I'm not going to let just anybody come in into my family, into my life, into my daughters and my wife. I'm not going to let anybody just grab this microphone and speak into your ears. Amen? So I'm not talking about you just laying down and being walked all over and trampled all over. Hey, a pastor said I can get kicked around like a, like a bad dog. By the way, I've had the dogs for two days in a row by myself. They're perfect angels, by the way. Hey, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you have to put boundaries. You have to put boundaries around your life. But it also doesn't give you permission to be nasty. Pray for them. Are you listening to me, church? Love them. Serve them. Bless them. I don't have to let them into my car. Hello? I don't have to go maybe chasing them down in the strip club. Somehow I got a word from the Lord for you. Get your tail out of the strip club. Hello? It doesn't mean that I have to text. uh, I don't have to give them a piece of my mind. Yeah, I will. Some of y'all, some of y'all do it in the name of righteous anger. That's just code for you want to get in your flesh and somehow justify it. Are you with me? Come on, I want to create a glorious church. I want to create a church. I want want the Holy Spirit to produce something on the inside of you and I that looks like him. Amen? I don't want to look like the world. Because if we look like the world, then let's just shut this place down and let's go watch Sunday football. Amen? Amen? I want to look like him. Amen? Jesus, help us. Help us look like you. Help us look like you. Jesus was betrayed by Judas. He was deserted by his disciples. He was beaten by the very people that he served. He was mocked. He was stripped naked. He was crowned with thorns. And ultimately, he was rejected by the very people he came to save. I would never do that to you, Lord. If you have unforgiveness, if you have anger, if you don't do, if you don't treat, if you don't walk the way that Jesus told us to, then you're doing the same thing. Ooh, that's strong. Come on, that's strong. That's the difference between just coming here for a, a nice cup of coffee, which, by the way, we serve great coffee. Hey, can I just give a shout out? There's a possibility we actually may have working bathrooms next Sunday. So that's pretty stinking excited. Amen. But I didn't come here just to flush a toilet, amen? I didn't come here just be, Lord, I want you to change me. Can I have a church? Can I be a part of a house that wants to be changed? I want my, th- I want my stinking thinking to be removed, amen? I want to somehow, Lord, I want to look more like you when I walk out those four doors. Nothing against a good cup of coffee. Nothing against a working sink. Praise the Lord. Nothing against a toilet that flushes inside of a building instead of outside of a porta potty. But Lord, I want more. I want to be hungry. God, I want to be thirsty for your word. I want to learn how to pray. I want to learn how to do good. I want to learn how to love people, even those people. I want to learn how to bless them. Jesus died for them. Walk in love. Bless them. Do good. Pray. I want to give you five things that's it's going to help you, I believe, be sure you're not one of those people. Come on, take your note. Get your phone out. As I wrap up this message. Number one, don't be thin-skinned. <laughs> Some of y'all are thin-skinned. Anyone, any situation, any nasty person triggers you. And you become jackal and hide. 
You're sweet, loving. You got your little, you got your little, uh, you got your little pretty little Chris, uh, uh, Christian hat on, and, and 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 you got your clothes on. You got your bumper stickers. You got 3.5 Bibles. Like you look all, you look all, you look good. But soon as someone crosses you, you come out after them. Can I just, can I, can I just share? It? Don't be thin-skinned, amen. Be thick-skinned and be tender-hearted. Did you hear me, church? Be thick-skinned and be tender-hearted. In other words, um, when someone says something about you, when someone says uh, some kind of derogatory, nasty comment about you, close your mouth. <laughs> I got a couple of people like, mm, mm, mm. Because your flesh wants to do what? It wants to fire back. And how many know that the enemy knows what triggers you? And people in your life know how to trigger you. Husbands and wives, you are notorious, including mine. I can trigger my wife like that. But how many know that we're supposed to be thick-skinned and tender-hearted? I need to learn. I've been reading a book. And uh, I'm going to finish it before the end of the year. It's called Being Unoffendable. Chris Walls and Janina, who's I think in the back, gave it to me. Becoming unoffendable. Because I just know that we, I, me, I, we're in a season where it's easy for me to get angered. It's easy for me to get triggered by other people. But Jesus said that you and I are supposed to love our enemies. We're supposed to bless them. We're supposed to do good. And we're supposed to pray for them. Listen, I want our house to learn how to forfeit your right to being, of, undef, to being offendable. Your right to be offendable, to be offended is canceled. Amen? Tough to do, but with the Holy Spirit, you can be, you can be unoffendable. Number two, I got to hurry. Let go of always needing to be right. <laughs> oh, that's for you. Let go of always needing to be right. I preached about it a couple weeks ago, and, and it was a message. Go back and listen to it about being more better. No matter, no matter what you do, you're always striving to be right. You're always striving to somehow look a certain way, act a certain way, be a certain way, instead of just being who God has called you to be. Amen. Being real, being raw, being transparent. That's why I love inviting the men and the women from, from Teen Challenge. They really, heck, um, we bless them, but I don't think they really knew how much they blessed us. Amen? Because I, I just took away, hey, if God can do it for that man or for that woman or for this, the 90 other men and women that came last Sunday, then God can do it for me. Amen? Come on, number three. Watch your words. Write that down. Watch your words. So how do I know I'm not one of those people? Is when the Lord, when the Holy Spirit prompts me to watch my words. In other words, don't gossip. Well, you know about sister so-and-so. Da, 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 da. Hey, if you can't do anything about it, then you are gossiping. Amen. If you are not in the position, if you don't have the authority, if, you, if God hasn't put you in whatever position that be, I'm not just talking about in the church, I'm just talking about in life. If you don't have the ability to fix it, then you need to learn to watch your words. Amen? Because one thing that the Lord hates, he, he hates gossip. Hates it. So do I, by the way. I'd rather just have real, honest, transparent honoring conversations with somebody that's got something against me, amen? That's got somebody, uh, my prayer for our house is, hey, if you've got something uh, you don't agree, you, don't, uh, you heard this or heard that, then hey, come talk to me, let's go. I got nothing. I, the Holy Spirit will reveal whatever lie that somehow, someway is on the inside of you or me or whoever it may be, amen? Come on, let's be a house that watches our words. Come on, fourth one, let's walk in honor. Write that down. Let's walk in honor. Let's take the high ground. In other words, don't take the bait. 
The bait is somehow, some way, they can bait you into a conversation. They can bait you into, um, into a conversation that honestly, you don't need to be a part of anyways. Can I just encourage you for those that work in office settings or those that work in teams, as heck, even in our own house, that I want you to, to remember this message, that when that toxic conversation comes up, when they're talking about, about the boss or when they're talking about the owner or when they're talking about whoever the gal is two, uh, two cubicles over, whatever it may be, will you not allow yourself to enter into that toxic conversation? I found myself when I used to work in, um, in corporate America, uh, the blessing is I worked remote from home here in Pensacola. Uh, the, the not so good thing is I had to go to an office um, uh, several times a month oftentimes. Unfortunately, it was in Vancouver, Washington, thus the need to travel a lot. And I just, I, 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 would, I would say, I would hear just toxic conversations. And I just think to myself, Lord, thank you. I don't have to expose me every single day around the coffee pot listening to that. Can I have an amen, church? Remove yourself. Pray for those. Heck, you may even need to do good and step into that and say, hey, listen, stop that. That's nasty. That's derogatory. Are you guys with me? Feel empowered. And if you don't feel empowered, then go find somebody that can shut down that conversation. Amen? Bring truth to it. All right, last one. Don't be thin-skinned. Let go of always needing to be right. Watch your words. Walk in honor. Take the high ground. And the last one is hold the mirror up. Flip into your Bible. Go hard left turn as I close. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Are you guys okay? Are you guys okay, church? All right, all right. Come on, open your Bible. Psalm 139. That last point is hold the mirror up. We started with this scripture several weeks ago, part of our trigger series. And God had laid this scripture on Angie and I's heart. And I want to close this, I want to close this gathering. I want to close this series with this. I want to come back to this verse. It says, search John, search Mary, search my husband, my kids. Search anybody but me. No, 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 no. Wrong version. No, it says search what? Search who, you guys? Search me. It says search me, God, and know my heart. So underline the word search me in your Bible. The next word that I underline, there, is it, there it is again. It says test me, shout me. He says test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in who? In me. And lead me into the way to the uh, in the way everlasting. In other words, Lord, I give you permission. If there's any thoughts, any anger, any unforgiveness, any bitterness, Lord, if there's anything in me that would tr be triggered by difficult people, those people, I give you permission to search me. I give you permission to test me. How many of you know if you, when you pray this prayer, God will test you? And how you know you've grown and is when you will encounter somebody difficult, maybe even before you hit those doors, or certainly when you pull out of the parking lot, or for sure when you go to the restaurant today, or maybe at work tomorrow, you will encounter somebody that is difficult. And it will be the testing of you. And you will know that the Lord, the Holy Spirit has done a work on the inside of you because of how you respond. I would have normally cussed them out in the name of the Lord. But in this case, you bless them. You close your mouth. You speak over them. You find good in them. For you see, if there's anything offensive in me, Lord, have your way.